Okay. Okay. So now yes. if I ask you within Capricorn, which is more probable? Is it Cancer or Scorpio or whichever comes before you will say, yeah, well, it can then. I'm glad you asked that question. Um, both become eligible, but now here's the way in which I practice what Kay and Rao called the composite technique. Okay. The, com the composite technique is that is to see a time period in both systems, planetary system of Barashari and okay. signs, signs. And if the two are agreeing with each other, if yeah. both of them show the potential of an event, then you can be more assured that this is when the event will actually happen, as opposed to a period that just becomes eligible for giving this, but doesn't. Okay, I got it. Okay. And and so you can see that the Rahu K2 axis falls along 1-7 for her. Yes, yes. And it's with the seventh Lord Jupiter. Okay, yes, correct. And it's with the natural karaka of marriage Venus. Yes, yes. So Rahu K2 overlapping with Capricorn Scorpio was a clear indication in, in both systems that this could be a marriage giving period. And I made my prediction based on this. Okay, I see. Using both systems together. The analogy that I use for this, you maybe, you know, if you go to Las Vegas, the gambling capital of the US, you'll have these things called slot machines, right? Um, and if you uh, are playing the slot machines, if all the symbols on the slot machine come up, this is when you hit the jackpot, right? Oh, okay. So what I try to do is to line up, you know, dashes, sometimes even more than two dashes, line up dashes to see if they're all showing the same event at the same time. This is what Kay and Rao called the composite technique. And then transits come into play. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. So there's three things involved in a prediction. Yes, okay. First of all, there has to be the static potential. Okay. You know, you're not going to predict great wealth on a chart that doesn't have any high quality Don Yogas. Okay, I see. Does it, does it doesn't matter what period you're going to run, it's never going to come because there's no static potential. Okay, okay. So inherently the chart has to support first and then we see the dashas. Right. Then the dashas have to activate that potential. Yes, okay. And then finally, transits have to support. Okay, and as you said, like Dhan Yogas, like just as a passing remark, I would like to ask you, like in Jaimini, apart from the conjunction or aspect of Atma Karka and Amatya Karka, so is it a Dhan Yoga or what other Dhan Yogas? Well, we... there, are, there are ways in which you see wealth potentials and when they get activated in the Jaimini system that are different from Parashara. Okay. But, the, the, you know, that, that's a little too complicated to go into in this presentation, but... Okay. Um, I will mention that there's a special lagna called the Aruta lagna or Pada lagna. Seeing the second and eleventh house from there in the Jaimini system is one of the ways in which you see wealth potentials. For example, okay, I see. of course there are combinations that you know give that Moon Venus is, is especially highlighted as being a uh, a wealth. And you know in this case it's it's uh, you know she married someone who was quite. Affluent. I, I don't know if I'd call them, you know, wealthy, but you know, they made half a million dollars a year. So you okay. know, that's, that's pretty affluent. <laughs> yeah, quite. And so, and, and so, so you can you can see the the Venus Moon combination, which is connected to the seventh house there. Um, yeah. In her in her case, and and think of the Don Yogas from the Parashri point of view. Venus is an exalted second and ninth Lord. Saturn's the fifth Lord. Yes, and both of the both of that's a five nine Raj, Dan Yoga combination from the Parashri point of view, falling in the seventh house. Yes, yes, yes. But now let's go on here. What house of the horoscope is Capricorn? Capricorn, uh, the fifth house. Fifth house. Mm -hmm. She just got married. Ah, okay. And, and, and what karaka does it contain? Uh, it's the Putra karaka, is it? Yes. Ah, child, okay. So, so, so what is my prediction going to be? <laughs> You're going to have a child. <laughs> yes, I predicted the, 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 the birth of both of her children. Okay, that's great. Okay. How simple is that? And uh, and here, like, uh, does Jupiter have any special rules? So, for example, in Capricorn, if Virgo would be activated, could we say well, it? Positive? No, no. Again, I'm, you're asking good questions because, you know, uh, in Germany, we're making predictions, not just utilizing the special Karakas, but also utilizing planets as Stira Karakas. In other words, yes. Jupiter is always the natural indicator of children. Yes, correct. correct. So if, if you're running the major period of a sign containing Jupiter, this can make it eligible, 
Oh, okay. Children. Okay. And Venus is the natural significator of love, relationships, and marriage. If you're running a major period of Venus or where from Venus falls seventh, okay, this can be a period also that can okay. give this. Okay, I see. Okay. So we're making these predictions not just with the special carcass, but also using the natural significations of uh, the planets as well. Okay. Very, very important to understand because, you know, people will raise the, I raise the question, well, you have the first seven house of the horoscopes relates to the seven carcass. Well, what about the other houses? <laughs> <You know? laughs> and and Kay and answers is this is where the natural significators come in. Okay, I see. Right? Okay. So um, this is a chart in which um, I'm demonstrating in a very simple way how predictions about career rise, about marriage, and about childbirth. Um, I was able and fortunate enough to be successful in making these accurate predictions, but I hope you can appreciate and your audience can appreciate how this was, from the Germany point of view, showing up in a very simple way. Very, very, very simplistic, yes. Now, it's not always that simple, <laughs> but, but sometimes it is. Now, yes. let, me show, let me show you this chart. This is actually one of my favorite examples here. I'm bringing, bringing up the chart of a man that we met in college. We became best friends, and we've remained very good friends since that long time ago. I actually is, am the um, godparent of his oldest son. Okay. Um, someone that I see once a year because we both are around Christmas time down in Florida together. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I, I, you know, I see him at least once a year. We have dinner together, him and his family, and I. And one back in 2013. He was just, I was asking him, you know, how things were going for him, what was going on in his life. And um, I could see that he was about to move into his Virgo major period in October of 2013. Okay. Now, what do we notice about this Virgo period that was the same as that Sagittarius period from the previous chart? Uh, Virgo period here, I see putra karaka and bk is bhatri karaka and am is is it amatya karaka amk ah okay okay so again he's running the sign period mm. of amk yes okay. not, not only that it's with an exalted pk that's a jaimini raja yoga okay i see okay. now look over into pisces okay yeah, okay, Atma Karaka, okay, okay, they, they're mutually aspecting because they are both dwell signs. And they are making multiple Jaimini Rajyogas, particularly I highlighted AKAMK. Okay. AKAMK. -A so I said, you know, Dan, it looks like you're going to be moving into a period that's going to really be very excellent for, for career and real rise in your career. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and he said, that's interesting that I would say that because he had he'd been a consultant to um, the vice president of a, of a huge billion dollar corporation. Okay. Okay. Vice president of human resources. And he'd been consulting a consultant to that corporation and to this man for a long time, very successfully. And this man was retiring. Okay. And, and, and even though my friend really didn't have the background for it, this man said, you know, you should apply to this position. You should be considered for this position. Okay. And he said, well, why not? But again, he wasn't really very qualified, and they were going to be doing a, a nationwide search with the search firm to identify other candidates. Mm -hmm. And then I said, but you know, when would this decision be made? Okay. And he told me, he told me it would be made in the fall of 2015. Okay. Sagittarius. Sub, sub period. Okay. Now, put your finger mentally on Sagittarius, What's the 10th house from there? Yes, yes, we have the Amatya Kaka there. So I said, Dan, if this decision is made during this time, I think you'll get the position. Wow, okay. And then I explained to them that it was customary when predictions like this come out for astrologers, they get 10% of the first year's salary. Okay, okay. I was, I was just kidding. I was just kidding. <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that, that was just a joke. But yeah. I told him that if he did get the position, he owes me a dinner, um, which, wow. uh, which, I, which, I, which I collect. Now, I saw this, and again, I'm not trying to toot my own horn. I'm just saying I'm trying to advocate the beauty of the Jamie system. I could make this assessment in a matter of seconds. Yes, perfect. I, I could see the potential of the verbal period for giving this 
experience, right? And then the sub-period of Sagittarius are bringing out some of the best potentials in that major period, right? Yes, yes. It's so very, no, very easily you predicted this, yes. Well, any, anyone could who knew the system. It's not, not me, it's just anyone who knows the system. Yes, correct, make, correct. And then, but you know, I'll show you how things come out in another ways. The third house is where these planets are, right? Yes. So when he runs the Virgo period, some indications of the third house are going to come out strongly. Yeah. And now who, and uh, one of the third house relates to short journeys, right? Short trips. Yes. yes. We, we would call that commuting, right? Yes, correct. Um, trips that take less than a day. Well, he was located in Chicago. The human resource department of the corporation was located in Milwaukee. So okay. since he's since he's moved in this period, he's constantly commuting back and forth, which is one which is just a one day, it's about a three, four hour drive or less than that. You know. Okay. But in other words, he was moving around a lot. He was doing this commuting, which is what's indicated by the fact that he's running Virgo, which happens to be the third house of the horoscope, also contains Mercury, who's the natural caric of short, short journeys. Okay, yes, correct. So do you see how this is coming out here? Yes, yes, yes. So multiple things can be seen at a time. Of course, just like in any planetary period, all aspects of a person's life are happening simultaneously. Yes, right? correct, 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 correct. But, but what was really just very clear is that this Virgo period was going to give him a very great career rise. Okay, yes, <laughs> that is, uh, that's very true, correct. Clear, clear it again. Now, I am going to use one famous person's chart that I made a prediction about, not looking at retrospect, but I made a prediction about. And um, again, you're going to see how simple this is. And I'm pulling out the chart of Prince Harry of England. Okay. If I can find it here. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. So the world knows that in uh, May of 2018, he married this American actress, Meghan Markle. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, both of the birth, the birth date of both of them were available. And so, you know, I didn't break the marriage because I wasn't looking at that. But um, <clears throat> I wondered if how soon they would have children thereafter, because both of them were in their early 30s. Mm -hmm. um, I, I suspected they probably wanted to have children. And so I wanted to see if I could predict when uh, that would happen, right? Okay. And um, so I'm looking at his chart, and um, the period is uh, Libra. Okay. Which you can see ran from age 24 to 35. Okay. Now, bear in mind that he married in 2018. Mm -hmm. Okay. In, wh in which case, for about a year's, a little over a year's period after that, he was going to be running major period of Libra, sub period of Libra. Okay. Which Jaimini Karaka is Saturn? Saturn here. Oh, okay. Putra Karaka in Libra. Yes, correct. <laughs> he had their son, Prince Archie, in Libra Libra. Ah, uh -huh, okay. okay. I predicted it. Okay, I see. Okay. How simple is that? Yes, yes. It's like you Period. see the Karaka and then it's down. Well, what, what Libra clearly shows, because it contains the PK, it shows the potential of okay. giving a child. Yes, okay. Now, that doesn't mean it's always going to do that, mm. but it shows the potential, because the PK can mean other things as well, right? Yeah. Um, but it definitely means children, and what sub-period becomes exceptionally or, you know, um, particularly eligible for bringing this, the sub-period of Libra itself. Yes, correct, correct. So um, this is an example of when I predicted um, the birth of a child in the charter. I did it to a group of students, and then, you know, I, I, it was posted in a Facebook group um, is when okay. I gave the prediction. And, of course, I was looking at her chart as well, Okay. Now, you'll see that because you mentioned, you know, well, how do we use the natural significations of planets? Mm -hmm. I'm going to pull up her chart and you'll see that in her case, um, well, I'll show, let me pull the chart up and then I'll explain what I was seeing then. And so, so I'm coordinating these two charts because if he's having a child, she's having a child. Right? So, um, you know, you want to see the, um, the confluence 
the yes. fact that the, 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 the same event is showing up in both of these charts um, at the same time. Correct. Which was, which was mid-year, I was predicting it for mid-year uh, 2019 is when they had, you know, their first child. Here's her chart, hold on. <clears throat> now, who's the uh, fifth lord of this birth chart? Mars. Who's the PK, planet with the fifth highest degrees? Uh, Saturn. And where is Jupiter, natural Karaka? Uh, okay, Virgo, yes, okay. And what period has she been running since 2012 up until just recently and where she's had two uh, children? Is it Sagittarius? Right. Okay. Who does Mars as the fifth lord, Jupiter as the natural indicator, and Saturn as the PK, all aspects oh, Sagittarius? Okay. Yes, yes, okay. Yes. Now I'm showing you how a sign becomes eligible for giving an event just by getting the aspect of these. Okay, okay. But of course, it's going to uh, also happen in a certain sub-period that becomes more eligible than others for giving this. Um, and, um, well, this is where it, it becomes not as obvious, um, but the sub-period was Aquarius. If you use Aquarius as a log, and the fifth house becomes Gemini, it contains the fifth lord and gets the aspect of Jupiter, natural indicator, and Saturn as the PK. Okay. So, this is what I was seeing. It was on this basis that I predicted they would have this child okay. in, in, in mid-year 2019. Okay, interesting. Now, now I want to show you a case of a prediction. You know, Kay and Rao, his mother uh, was a very, very good Jodishi. It's it's from whom he first learned Jodish, Kay and okay. Rao. Mm -hmm. and, she, and she specialized in two questions. When a young girl would marry and when she would have children. Oh, yeah, great. And so um, he wrote a book called Planets and Children, where he shares the techniques given by his mother, not just for predicting the birth of a child, but predicting the birth of a child within days. Oh, interesting. Okay. So uh, this year I wrote an article titled, um, the subtitle was uh, The Fine Timing of Childbirth. And I, I used as an example a prediction I'd made that I was fortunate enough to predict when the child was born within less than 24 hours. Okay, that's that's great. That's great. But of course, you start with major periods that show eligibility for giving this, right? Yes. So yeah. if, if you look down at the Charadasha, you can see that this is a, this is a chart of a Russian woman student of mine. Russian, and she, oh, she, okay. she, 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 she entered a cancer period. Okay. Which is actually a 12 year period. It's the longest a, a, a sign period can be. Okay. Who does cancer contain? Yeah, the Buddha, Karaka, and Jupiter, right? Both. Yes. Jupiter, Jupiter, Jupiter is both the natural indicator, it's also the PK. Yes. What is its, what is its condition? Yeah, it's exalted there. <laughs> so you know that this period is going to be very eligible for giving children. Mm, and before yeah. before I actually met her, which was back in 2016, she had already had it one child in this period. But now what sub periods? One of the techniques that is utilized is what's called Dasha Lagna. We use cancer, mm -hmm. the major major period, as yeah. if it's a Lagna, and see what happens to the chart from there. Okay. So mentally use cancer as a Lagna. Which house becomes so emphasized, so prominent, has the most planets from there? Yeah, Scorpio, of course. And which house is it from Cancer? Fifth house. Fifth house. And you'll notice that it also gets the Rashi Dristi of Jupiter as the PK. Oh, on, okay. on. And from there, it has its own Lord in its own house, which would be Mars. Oh, okay. Because Cancer aspects Scorpio, that's why, yes, correct. Yes. So clearly, what sub-period holds the potential mm -hmm. for giving her another child? Alex Scorpio, yes, very true. This is what I predicted. Mm, okay. okay. And then using finer levels of the dashas and transits, even the transits of the moon, that's how I um, predicted the child was born on, uh, I predicted the child would be born last September on the 22nd. It was born late in the evening on the 21st. Wow. <laughs> okay. And again, I'm not trying to say oh, I'm such a great astrologer because I can do this. 
this is what I learned from K.N. Rao. The credit is his. Yeah. I just, I, I just applied his techniques, which always were very brilliant. Right? Yes, correct. Brilliant. I, I like to say my astrology is just a pale imitation of K.N. Rao's. You know? <laughs> So well, it's um, indeed, like very good that you are giving all the credits to your uh, Ken also. So yes, that's very no, good. Well, it's it's just what's true. Now, of yeah. course, I've, I've gained from my own experience. Now, twenty-seven years doing Jewish, I've learned a lot through my own experience. But really, the basis, most of the basis of what I've learned was came from what I learned from him and through his example and researching things. So this was a, a an example. But you know, probably the question I've been asked more than any other. <laughs> is about marriage, <laughs> you know, and uh, particularly from women, right? Um, you know, Kay and Rao, when he first came to the U.S. and was giving consultations, he called this the number one question in the U.S. Mm, okay. every, every, everyone he consulted with, which to a large degree was a lot of women, um, especially if they weren't married or in a relationship, this is what they wanted to know when, if when, if a relationship was coming in their life, and if so, when. Mm, okay. So you've probably heard the name Deepak Chopra, right? Yes, 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 yes. So at one point I was affiliated with Deepak. Uh, I was brought into his center in La Jolla to teach Jodish. I did classes there and, um, you know, I got to know the people around him, one of whom was his publicist. And this chart belongs to the woman who was his publicist. And at that time, um, when I was around her, she had gotten into her mid 40s. She had had a lot of different relationships, but had never married okay. and really wanted really wanted to marry and was looking for what she called a soulmate, somebody who could become a life, par mm -hmm. life partner, right? Okay. And she asked me if I could predict when she would meet her soulmate. I told her I couldn't predict necessarily when she would meet her soulmate, but I could indicate um, when I thought there would be time coming up in her future that would be very relationship giving. Okay. And so what I was seeing, and this was in uh, late 1996, what I was seeing is that she had just recently moved into her Aries period. Okay. Yeah. Now, use Aries as if it's the first house. Yes. Look in the seventh house from there, which would be Libra. What do you see? Yeah, I see the dark arca in exaltation. See the dark arca. So clearly, I was seeing okay. that Aries showed a strong eligibility. So then it was a question of sub-period. Mm, okay. Right? And um, uh, one of the ones I was looking at, now, of course, which house of the horoscope is the seventh house? Which sign is on the seventh house? Oh, Taurus. Taurus. So the first sub-period that showed some strong eligibility this way was Taurus. Okay. Why? It's simply because it's the seventh house of the horoscope. Okay, I see. Okay. But of course, I'm coordinating this with what I'm seeing in the Vimshot Ridasha, 1997. Mm -hmm. Okay. I saw that she was running major period of Saturn, sub period of Mercury. Okay. So now see the Navamsha. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Who's, who's the seventh lord of Navamsha? Yes, Saturn, yes. Who's in the seventh house? Mercury. <laughs> Do you see? Yes, yes. Perfect. And so I predicted in this, and she met this man who she now considers her soulmate, and she's okay. been married ever since. I've been married ever since. Oh, wow. Okay. That's great. <laughs> so this was an example. Now, um, let me show you another example. And I'm purposely showing an example of women older, you know, who, um, you know, may have never been married or maybe they've been married and they divorced. They want to be remarried. Okay. Um, you know, this was the case here. When this woman first consulted with me, which was back in, um, uh, let me get this up here back in the late 1990s, or actually, you know, I think she'd gotten out. It was, she was a 53 at the time, okay? Or no, she was maybe maybe 52 at the time. But anyway, sometimes you get lucky, okay? When people consult with you, in that, you you know, they're asking you a question and you can actually give them the answer that they want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Not, not always, not always, okay? But in this case, she had recently moved into her Aries major period also, Okay. Now, in the previous chart, Dara Karaka was falling seventh from Aries, if you remember, right? Yes, yes. But then we also used Dara Karaka in the Vamsha. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where is Dara Karaka Jupiter in the Vamsha? Yeah, Jupiter is in Sagittarius in the Lakna and 
Yes. No, in Navamsha. In yes, Navamsha. yeah, he's in Aries in the Navamsha, yes. And she had just moved into the Aries period. Correct, correct. Now, you made notice that Dara Karaka in the birth chart is in Sagittarius. Mm, okay. So which sub-period do you think I dialed into? Pisces, uh, Aries and Sagittarius. Right. Which mm. was going to run for, um, you know, a period of about four or five months. Okay. In, in 2001. Now, again, I'm coordinating this with the uh, Vimshotri Dasha. Okay. She was running the Mercury major period. Who's the seventh lord in the seventh house? Mercury. <laughs> the sub period was going to be Jupiter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Along the one seven axes. Yes, yes, correct. Simple. Yes, very I true. Predi I, I predicted her marriage during that time. She did. Okay. 